In this tutorial, we are going to cover basic Godot animations. Now, Godot can animate images in quite a few different ways. Although the easiest one is probably an animated Sprite 2D. That's just another note that works very similar compared to a Sprite 2D. The major difference is that it's, well, animated. Another one would be tweens. Those can help you animate between two different attributes, like the scale, the position, stuff like that. Both of those would be a very easy way to get started with animations. Although, if you want to have really complex animations, Godot also has an animation player node. This one is significantly more powerful. Although for our purposes, we don't really need it, so I'm gonna skip over it. Let's get started though and see how far we get. Back in Godot, I want to get started with the new node and that's gonna be an animated Sprite 2D. I already had it open. If I now press enter, we get one more node. And at the moment, this doesn't have anything, but if I hover over the top left, there you can see at the bottom, we have an animated Sprite 2D. This one at the moment has a warning that we do not have Sprite frames. For that, in the inspector on the right, you want to look at animations, and there we have sprite frames. At the moment, this one says empty, and we have to give it new sprite frames. Click on that, and nothing happens. Now, if you click on that again, you get to the animation frames. In fact, if you look at the bottom, now you should have a few more options. Sprite frames is what we care about, and in there, we can create a couple of animations, although at the moment, we only have a single one. This one lives inside of the star folder in graphics. In fact, this is quite a few different PNG files. Select all of them and simply drag them in the animation frames. And now we have an animation. And if I zoom in on the top left, then we can see we have the star, although at the moment it doesn't do very much. To make it do a thing, click on this play button. And there we have the animation, although it is really slow. To fix that, we can set the frame rate. At the moment, we have five frames per second, which isn't ideal. This should rather be something like 30. And now this feels much better. And once again, if you zoom up really closely, it looks bad. But if you zoom out, that feels much better. Although hard to see right now, but that we're gonna work on in just a bit. First of all though, we have an animated sprite, and this one has a couple of options. Most importantly, you see a bunch of them at the top in the sprite frames editor. For example, there we have autoplay on load, we have a looping option, we can control things here, and there are a few more, but autoplay and loop are the really important ones, along with frame rate. Also, if you look at the right, there we have the animation, which you want to play by default, we only have a single one, and the current frame. Also, there's a speed scale where you can increase or decrease the speed. That's basically all you need. Now, in my case, what I want to do is in the level scene, I want to create a node 2D to organize everything. This one I'm gonna call stars and then put the animated sprite in there. Also, this star should be below the player. And now all we have to do is to create a few more stars and then scatter them across the entire screen. That part is going to be your exercise. I want you guys to duplicate the animated Sprite 2D loads of times and then randomize the position, size, and speed. How many duplicates you are going to create is entirely up to you. Just choose whatever looks good. On top of that, as a tip, you can get the children of a node with get children. That should be really useful. Pause the video now and see how far you get. Back in Godot, we do not need the sprite frames anymore, and instead I want to duplicate the animated sprite inside of stars a whole bunch of times. There's no specific number. Later on, when we see the actual result, just add or remove a couple if you feel you have too many or too few. Anyway, now we have a whole bunch of stars. With that, we can work inside of the level script, and we want to do something when the game starts up, which means in the ready function. And let me add a comment in there, because later on there's going to be a bit more. First of all, I need to get the size of the window. This we have already done. I want to get the viewport, then I want to get the visible rectangle, and on that I want to get the size. Also, the data type should not be changing on this one. So semicolon equal, and then we are good to go. 
Next up, we need random numbers, which means I want to create once again a random number generator, which we can do with random number generator and u. Righty, next up, we want to loop over all of the children inside of the stars node. For that, we can use a for loop. So let's call it for star in, and then I want to get the stars with get children. This is going to give us all of the child nodes. And by the way, there are a couple of similar methods. We could, for example, get a single child, basically using indexing, then get the amount of children, or simply get all of the children, which in my case is what I want to get. And now in there, we want to do a couple of things. I suppose the most important thing to work on is the position, because at the moment we are in the top left and that just doesn't look very good. For that, I want to get a random x and a random y value. That part we have already seen a couple of times. We want to get r and g and then rand i range. We want to go from zero all the way to size, and now we could either use indexing zero or simply use dot x. Both will give you the result. I suppose dot x is a bit cleaner, but anyway. Next up, we want to have a random dot y. This one is going to work in basically the same way. I can literally copy all of this. The only difference is this should be size.y. And now we can update the position of the star with star.position. And this should be a vector2 with random x and random y. Okay, let's try. And we are getting the stars in a random position. Although I think I made a mistake. If you open a single one of the stars, you can see that autoplay wasn't enabled and that really should be on. And well, this we have to activate for all of them. So let me get rid of all of the nodes and make sure now that autoplay is enabled and then duplicate them a whole bunch of times again. And now if I run all of this, we should have animated stars and that is looking much better. Cool. Next up then, we can work on, let's say the scale. For that, I want to create another variable that I will call random underscore scale, which is going to be rng dot f range. Because for this one, I want to have values between one and two. After we have that, I want to get the star again and then work on the scale. The values for this one is going to be a vector two. And both of these numbers you want to have identical. So in here, we have to specify X and Y. If those two numbers don't align, you are stretching out the animated sprite in one way or the other. So for example, if you scale it by two and one, then it would become twice as wide as they are tall. Let's actually demonstrate. There we go, this is looking a bit weird. So instead, we want to have the same number for X and Y, which fortunately we can get quite easily. Random scale, we already have. And now, if I run off this again, that feels a bit better. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Next up, I want to animate the speed. The animation speed to be a bit more specific. For that, in animated sprite, if I open one of the nodes, we have a speed scale. And in code, this would be speed underscore scale. That's literally all we need. So I want to get the star and then speed underscore scale. And here we can assign a value right away. By default, we have one. But if we get rng.randf range between, let's say, 0 0.6 and 1.4, we should have quite a bit more randomness. If I now run all of this again, we get some stars significantly faster. Like this one, for example, is quite fast, whereas this one is a lot slower. So this is working perfectly fine. And with that kind of system, you have a lot of control over how an animated sprite is going to work and where it's going to be. And that's kind of it for basic animations. An animated sprite isn't really getting that much more complicated. Cool, then next up, we can work on another topic. And this is going to happen inside of the laser. At the moment, the laser simply appears, which I suppose it's fine, but it would look much better if we scaled it up at the beginning. That way, it looks like it's coming more out of the player. 
Now, for all of that, we could simply select the laser, then go to transform, and then work on the scale. And write some script where by default it is zero, and then with some kind of timer, we're animating this to a scale of one. That would work, but it would be quite a bit of code, and Godot has a better tool for that. And that is called a tween. It's short for in between. All it really does is it transitions from one value of an attribute to another value of an attribute. I think if I demonstrate this, it's going to be much more clear. Basically what I want to do, when we are adding the laser to the scene, so in the laser code, I want to have a ready function. In there, first of all, I want to set the start size. So sprite2d.scale is going to be a vector2 with 0 and 0. That way, by default, we shouldn't be able to see a laser at all because the image is scaled to nothing. Cool, that works. And now, every time the player shoots and we create a laser, I want to scale the laser up to a scale of 1 and 1 over a duration of 1 second. And for that, we can create a tween, which you do with a method called create tween. And then, on this tween, you have a whole bunch of methods that are incredibly useful. The one I'm going to use is called tween property. This one needs to have four arguments. The first one is the node you want to work with, in our case the sprite 2D. Next up, we want to work with the property scale. Then we want to have a target value. In our case, this is a vector 2 with 1 and 1. And finally, we need a duration. And let me expand the code window so you see better what's going on. The final value is the duration, let's say 1 second. That's probably way too long. But if I now try all of this, the laser starts to grow over a duration of one second, and that is definitely way too long. Let's say 0 0.1. If I now run this again, we can see the lasers are looking much more realistic. I guess if we change this to 0 0.2, then yeah, I guess it feels even better. But play around with these values. Also, what you can do is add a few more methods after this. For example, there's one that is from, where we can set the start value, which in our case could be a vector two with zero and zero, and then we don't need this bit at the beginning anymore. If I now run all of this again, we still get the same outcome. Tweens are the kind of topic that for specific purposes are incredibly powerful. You could select any kind of attribute for any kind of node. It's super flexible. And if you just want to have a simple animation, like for example, you want to change the position or the scale or the transparency of any node, this would be the easiest way to approach it. And all right, with that, we have covered basic animations. And I want to be a bit better with fixing the debugger right away. So let's have a look. We are narrowing a conversion where float is converted to int and loses precision. Godot is complaining about line 14 and line 15. Basically what is happening in here, I think, is that size.x in Godot is a floating point value. And since we are putting that into a rand i range, we are losing some precision because we are converting a float to an integer. Now, a really easy way to get rid of that is simply to wrap it into an int function. That way we are a bit more explicit. And let's do this for both. Let's try the code again. And the debugger is happy again. This is a very minor point, so you wouldn't really have to do it. But I like to keep the debugger happy, because it's getting a bit annoying if you always have some kind of warning down there. All right, with that, we have basic animations. And I suppose I should demonstrate that if you want to have a really powerful animation, then you would look at the animation player. There's also an animation tree to extend the animation player. This can get really complex. But in the animation player, you can basically create a new animation. Let's call it new animation. And then add various tracks to animate properties. This one, if you want to have something really complex, is incredibly useful. Although for our game, it's massive overkill. But anyway, we are done with this part. Next up, we can work on some UI elements.